Hi, welcome to another how-to by myself, Rob Allen. As you can see, I'm at home. We're in lockdown in South Africa, and uh, you're all aware, coronavirus epidemic. I hope you guys are all playing it safe out there. From home today, I'm gonna to try and basically do what I can only do at home is small items, and today we're gonna concentrate on how to tie your wishbone into your rubber. So, here we are. I'm at my dining room table with the kitchen cutting board. We have a piece of 16 more rubber in front of me. Before we start, that's the edge you need, nice and sharp. Not a jagged section like that. You want to be able to push into a nice flat surface. To trim that, very easy. Small dab of dishwashing liquid. Just going to rub that around, gives you a little bit of lubrication and then a really sharp kitchen knife. Simply set it up directly over where you want to cut, push down hard, nice clean cut. Very simple, easy to do in the field, obviously in a factory we have more fancier cutting equipment, but this works fine. The little bit of dishwashing liquid, you can also apply to the end for where you're going to push in the bead. Set the bead up in any tube, you can make your own. I've even used a, a big pen in the field. Cut it, slot it, use that to keep it stable. And she goes. You don't need to push it in too far, it's not a problem, it's going to pull back the moment you pull on it. And that's how you set the bead. When putting wishbones into rubber, I don't suggest ever use long nose pliers. These can be dangerous. Whilst pushing, it's very easy to slip and poke your finger. Exactly the same if you try and put it in using a screwdriver. None of these are very good to use. The last thing you want to do on a trip is damage your finger quite badly. Um, there are guys that can force these in with their thumbs. I've never really tried. Um, the right application is the proper tool. There's many variations of these and they definitely save your fingers. Now let's talk about the line used. I'm going to use an orange, this is an orange Dyneema, about 1.8 millimeter. You need at least 1.8 to 2 millimeter. Too thin can cut into the rubber. I'm using orange to show it's more visible. The original knot we used to use was what we call a clove hitch. It's basically one loop. Do that again one loop with the second loop passed under the first loop. That is referred to as a clove hitch. We used this for many years in the beginning but combined it with a granny knot on top. That's how we used to tie them up in the old days. Then we got a bit more inventive and found that it was possible to use the same knot but give it an extra twist. That's all it is. Years later I found out this had a name. This is called a constrictor knot. And it's basically clove hitch with an extra twist. If you grab the two ends after you've made it and pull it, it will come apart and create a straight line again. I'll do that again. One turn second turn, put the top one under the bottom, that gives you your clove hitch. Now slack off one of the lines, take the other through that loop and pull on it. I'm not going to pull on it on my finger, that's going to be painful. That just shows you what it looks like. Both tag ends 
come out between the wraps. If you turn it over, you will see it's not crossed over anywhere, only at the top. So all the movement occurs on top. I'm now going to transfer that onto rubber. You can do it on your finger, then slide it through your rubber and pull it tight. The problem with that is when the rubber's joined, you still need to make it on the rubber. So I'll make it on top of the rubber to show you how it works. So, here we go. I have now cut the end off and I'll give it a light burn. It's no longer fluffy. The other end of this line is now attached to the back of a chair on the opposite side of the table, which will give me something to pull against. You need one side to be tensioned. We start by wrapping on top. Excuse me, I'm left-handed. Uh, I might try and get somebody to flip this image so you can see the opposite hands using the line. But being left-handed is the way I tie. So we start by crossing over just ahead of the bead. You can see the lump where the bead is, just ahead of it. And you wrap fully around. When you get to the top, cross over. Continue that wrap back around till you come back to the top. You now slack off this middle line, the one that's over the top, just slightly. And now you take the tag end, push it under. That causes the knot to now lay in the same fashion as what a conventional clovage knot would be. As we showed earlier, nothing crossing at the back. Both tag ends exit between the wraps, but we need to put in an extra twist. To do that, we slack off, in this case it's easiest to slack off the side that's under tension. Let's keep it in place. So we push back on that one. You'll see it lifts up on this side. Take that tag end, wrap it around. When it's pulled, as you can see, both tag ends are now still in the middle and nothing wrapped around underneath. To get this cinched up, I'm going to move forward a little bit. Use a pair of pliers, grab the tag end and pull gently on it, keeping it close together and slowly roll. As you can see, that's cinched up right on the edge, probably closer than we'd normally set it, but that will work. Pull down extremely low, and that's all you need to do. There's no way that big bead can come past that knot. When cutting, I always find it best to keep it under tension, hold the loose end, and cut with the scissors. If you cut holding the scissors close to the rubber, you'll end up with the right length remaining. That is probably three or four millimeters long. That, when fluffed up, burns down into a ball very nicely. You don't need much heat. It pulls very neat into a mushroom head and cannot slip out underneath. Now with a little bit of tension, you can do exactly the same on the other side. Cutting with the scissors, fluffing it up and burning it down. Always apply the heat slowly, you don't want to affect the rubber. And there you go. Very neat, very easy to do. If you need to remove it, this top loop crossing over is the one to cut first. You very simply cut carefully through that one and into the loop under it. 
as soon as you get through it, everything pops loose. There you go. You haven't damaged the rubber in any way. Everything's still nice and tight. Well, I hope that explains a lot. Hope it helps. Good luck.